Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Today I want to show you how to make ghee. In the world, we usually find ghee in packages made by industrial process and they call it ghee. But in fact, it is clarified butter or some other thing that is not ghee. The real ghee, uh, as it's stated in the scriptures, it increases your lifespan, it improves your overall health, it's very, very nutritious and nourishing. And one of the main differences of real ghee is that it is cultured. There's two ways in which ghee, or so-called ghee, is made. Uh, one is by extracting the cream from the milk and then just basically putting that in a blender and obtaining butter. That is not cultured. Because it's not cultured, it doesn't have the medicinal property. When we take milk and then put that or transform that into curd, which is different from yogurt, when we take that curd and churn it, we obtain the butter and buttermilk. That butter is cultured. It has been uh, transformed, the milk has been transformed by bacteria into curd and then into butter. That butter, when it is uh, further processed or the water is removed, then we obtain ghee. That ghee has all those nice qualities that are mentioned in the scriptures. Because uh, the churning process cannot be done so easily, by a, a big blender in an industrial process. Uh, most industry today, they just uh, use what they call a cream separator and just take the cream out of the milk, churn that and call it ghee. So it is very, very important that you do this on your own from raw milk. I'm going to show you the whole process from just the raw milk from the cow how to process all the way from milk to curd, from curd to churning into butter and buttermilk, and from there to ghee. The buttermilk that you will obtain from that process is also extremely delicious. When you offer this ghee and buttermilk to Krishna, uh, Krishna will be very, very pleased, and you will taste a very, very different result from what you're used to when you buy so-called ghee in the store. Many people also will say, just buy butter in the store and then melt that and remove the water and that's ghee. It's the same problem because that butter was actually not made by culture. So then you're not actually tasting or getting all the benefits that you're supposed to get. There are also other details that I will describe in the description of this video. So please read along and uh, hopefully the process is very clear and if you have any questions please add in the comments below and please help me share this video because the cows need to be glorified properly and if we know how to do these uh, milk products then there is more chance that people in the world will appreciate the value of the cow. Thank you. Hare Krishna. The first step is to get raw milk. It is best to get milk from the Cebu breeds from India. In this case, we have 15 liters of raw milk. The next step is to boil the milk. Sometimes the milkman has dirty hands or the milk gets contaminated somewhere in the process. So at this point, it's best to boil it to ensure the milk is completely clean and free from any nasty bacteria. Then we will use this milk once it cools down to prepare the curd. If you have a thermometer, measure temperature until it reaches 110 Fahrenheit. If you don't have one, use body temperature as your reference. So now we are going to add the curd to the milk in order to produce more curd. It's approximately half a tablespoon per liter of milk. If you don't know how to make curd or don't have one, please watch this other video.
After waiting eight hours, more or less, according to the weather, you should see that the whole milk has turned into curd. There should be no putrid smell and the curd should not taste very sour either. It should look something like this, very very nice and creamy and chunky. The next step is to churn the curd. This is a churning machine that we got from Europe. It is important that the churning machine or whatever you use to churn rotates in both ways, clockwise and anti-clockwise, because that will keep the curd cool. So then you add all your curd. In this case, we can put at most uh, six liters, five, six liters. So we put all that we can and we start churning. It is very important that the curd is cool, even better if it can be fully cold from the fridge. The reason for this is that butter is very creamy at room temperature, but when it's colder, it's more solid. So as you churn, it's easier to separate the butter from the buttermilk. Once the churning is finished, you should see that the butter separates from the buttermilk. In this case, everything that you see on the lid is butter and also the chunks that are floating on the buttermilk. Because the butter is still very creamy, what we're going to do is add a little cold water and this will help the butter become a little more solid. And this should make it much easier for you to take the butter out. Everything else that's left in there is called buttermilk. This buttermilk is actually a very interesting substance. It has the consistency of yogurt and is very creamy. It should not be very transparent. It should be almost like uh, creamy yogurt. It is also very tasteful and you can offer that to Krishna already. But we are still not finished with the process of making ghee. So now you see everything is collected very nicely with the help of cold water and we can take it out very easily. Try to remove any extra buttermilk in the butter because this will help you reduce the cooking time for the ghee. And this should be the result, nice and creamy butter. Now we're going to turn it into medium flame and we're going to start to heat up the butter until it all becomes liquid. The water will come out as steam and also solids will start to come out. So now we're going to let it cook, being careful that it won't burn. If the flame is too high, the solids will go to the bottom and stick and it will start burning. We don't want that. So we leave it cooking like that until uh, it starts to clear up and foam will form on the top. And we'll have to scrape that out slowly without stirring the whole thing. And then uh, be, always be careful not to, to burn. If it starts burning the, in the bottom, the solids stick to the bottom, uh, it's better to switch to another pot. So now it's heating up and you see a little foam on the top uh, and you still let it boil. So as you see foam forming on the top, you start scraping it out. Be careful if it gets too hot, you have to lower the flame. And then just basically scrape that white foam out. So it continues boiling. It's now in a rolling boil and a lot of steam is coming up. So that's the water and continue like that. It has been cooking now for about 30 minutes and I've been skimming off some of the foam that forms on the top, especially in the beginning because it had more water. 
but now you see that it's turning golden and that is the actual ghee. A lot of steam has been evaporating, that's all the water coming out and now you see very nice golden color. So this is a part where you have to be careful not to put the flame too high because solids will start to go to the bottom and now it's in low flame. I had to reduce it because it was boiling too fast. And as you see the foam that forms on the top, you have to very, very carefully scrape it off, trying not to mix it with the ghee. So it's, uh, you'll, you'll get some ghee out too, but try to be very careful and just get the foam. We'll continue doing this until everything is clear. Okay, so now I've been skimming off the butter for another 10 minutes and um, all the butter has become very clear. Now it's turning into ghee and now it's so clear that I can see the bottom and in the bottom there's several solids that are stuck and they're a little brownish. So this is the right time to now filter it through the coffee filter. And if there's any remaining solids, just skim them off. One thing is important that it might start bursting sometimes. So you need to have a colander or something to protect. If you're skimming, you don't want to get burnt. So you can do like this and then just uh, skim. So now we're going to do the coffee filter to, to obtain the pure ghee. Before there were no coffee filters, so you would have to do this and put it in another pot and then repeat the process. But coffee filter is really cheap and it's very easy to get, so we're going to use that today. So now very carefully, this is hot ghee, so it's very dangerous. You have to be very careful to pour the ghee through the strainer into whatever recipient you have. And just be very, very careful. This is very hot. The pot ended up. It has lots of solids on the bottom. Some of them brown, burnt. This is why when you're uh, taking the solids out earlier, you don't want to mix the whole pot. You don't want to move the bottom because otherwise, otherwise it will blend back in. And if this burns too much, then it makes the whole ghee brown. So this is our result. Very nice, clear, pure ghee. And it's about one and a half cups. And now we are offering our fresh made ghee in a lamp to Krishna. Hare Krishna.